Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We've got over 750 subscribers and it's you guys to thank for that. I'm very thankful and I never thought we'd be anywhere past 50 subscribers to be honest. Today we're going to be going over the One Leaf Rapid Fire Scope and One Leaf NV100 night vision device. So just as a forewarning, I did not buy these things and never planned on buying them. One Leaf actually emailed me and asked if I could do a review. So just to be clear, guys, um, this is a digital night vision device. It is not analog night vision, not like a PVS-14 or PVS-31. Uh, this is digital. So this would be comparable to something like uh, the Psyonix Aurora uh, night vision camera. So I'm going to show plenty of footage from that today and just tell you if this thing's even worth buying, uh, considering you see this thing on Amazon and a couple other videos on YouTube. I am going to be honest about it. I did tell One Leaf, hey... Um, if I trash this thing, uh, that's my opinion and I'm going to stick with it. And they said, yeah, we accept all good and bad reviews. So the first thing that you need to understand is these products are Chinese. They're straight from China. When I got the tracking number, when they sent this thing to me, um, it came with a 17 track uh, tracking number, which is uh, it's from China. And it shows on uh, the, the tracking statement that it started in Hong Kong and it got all the way here to Arizona. So... Uh, I do appreciate the fact they sent it all the way to me, um, considering I'm a really small YouTuber, but just understand that even if you buy these things off Amazon, it is coming from China, so there's no ifs, ands, or buts. I did include the emails uh, that we sent back and forth, including this one right here where I talk about, hey, this is my policy on reviewing things and let them know I was going to trash it if it was bad. I asked them if they were going to be willing to agree to the conditions, and sure enough, I'll, I'll include the next... Uh, the next email they did. They were uh, very appreciative. The representative I talked to, uh, he said, yeah, go ahead and do whatever you want. Um, I asked if I had to return it and he said no. So that's kind of cool. Uh, it's actually going to give me plenty more time to go ahead and review this over time. So I've gone ahead and did the, took the liberty of unboxing it for you. It came in a pretty basic packaging, nothing fancy. It's not like Vortex. It comes with a lens cleaning cloth and an owner's manual. Um, and one thing I will say for it being Chinese, the owner's manual is actually pretty well detailed. So I'm going to give them that. Overall, the scope weighs 28.3 ounces and has an overall length of 11.9 inches. So it's pretty big and it's pretty heavy. Uh, it does have these nice uh, flip up lens caps that you can remove. Um, the one thing that i was kind of worried about were the actual scope rings. I wasn't sure they're going to hold up, but I was able to torque them down on my rifle to 60 foot pounds of torque and they didn't break. So that's good. This also comes with two rubber eye relief pieces that you can interchange and put on the camera, a clip on device so that you're able to put the night vision device on uh, one of your own scopes. Uh, you also receive, uh, besides the camera itself, you receive an Allen wrench with a couple of O rings. Um, I'm not sure where those O-rings actually go. Can't really find a place for them. Uh, an extra battery, and then it comes with a charging cable. Um, it looks like it's a micro USB uh, to be able to plug into the side of the camera and charge it directly. Uh, and then it also comes with a roll of electrical tape, which they say is used to help you space, uh, put a little bit more space between the clip-on adapter uh, on whatever scope you're using. And then the night vision device itself. So while the scope is pretty basic, I believe it'll do a pretty good job for basic accuracy testing. So like I said, it does have removable flip-up lens covers, uh, which are actually really sturdy and pretty tight. It doesn't sound like they're going to come off at all during recoil. Uh, you also have 3 to 12 uh, magnification, uh, which I think is pretty low considering how heavy and how big the scope is. You have an illuminated reticle adjustment, which goes from 0 to 11 settings. Uh, and I'll get into this later, but it's probably the worst feature of the scope. You do have a nice parallax adjustment that goes uh, from 0 to 300 and then to infinity, um, which is actually pretty nice. It works pretty well. You do have capped windage and elevation adjustments, which should be noted are not mushy and have a very crisp adjustment. One of the features of the scope is that built into the objective lens, it actually has its own clip-on attachment for the camera, but it also includes these clip-on attachments if you want to use your own scope with that camera. So in theory, the way that this works is once you screwed on the clip-on device onto your scope, uh, the camera just twists right in like that and locks into place. And it actually works very well. Uh, the camera doesn't wobble around. Uh, it's actually very easy to put in there, as you can see me struggling with it the first time. Um, and it has a little detent that you can see. Uh, this thing actually snaps right into place. It's a very positive click. 
Now, as you can see, one thing that should be noted is that when this is attached to the scope itself, it is a very long setup. So you're gonna have to install this on your rifle accordingly. And again, just showing you some of that electrical tape that helps to actually install the clip-on device. So now we're gonna go over the actual night vision device. So on the side of it, you can open up this uh, plastic piece and you'll see uh, the micro SD card slot, uh, a headphone jack, and the micro USB port to charge it. Uh, it should be noted that they do give you uh, a micro SD card. And in my case, it was a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. Here you can see it has the diopter adjustment right here. And it also has an objective focus adjustment wheel, which are both very smooth and easy to use. It does have a removable rechargeable battery. Uh, it looks pretty similar to like an 18650 battery, a like rechargeable battery, uh, but you just leave it in this thing. You don't really even need to take it out. Um, you just charge it via the micro USB cable. You have an adjustable IR sensor. So you can pull this thing out or push it back closer to the unit. And what this does is adjust the amount of spill or the focus, the tightness of the actual IR beam. It does have a cap to protect it. Uh, and you also have a visible red laser, which I think is absolutely worthless. Um, just use this to play with your cats or your dogs or mess with your brothers or sisters or whatever. Um, in practice, this thing has no use. They say it's for target identification, but I believe that's just because it's Chinese. They don't really know our actual uses here, uh, so it's worthless. Your basic controls, it's a button system. To turn it on, you push the, and hold the power button and a green light will turn on uh, and then you can look in and basically you're looking at a digital screen um, to operate and use the camera or the recorder itself. Um, it does take a little bit to try to figure out how to actually use the camera, but if you read the manual uh, and you play around with it for a couple hours, you'll figure it out actually pretty quickly. Uh, it's not that hard. Um, so yeah, it's pretty intuitive to learn. The buttons aren't mushy. Uh, it's actually pretty positive when you're clicking through things. Um, yeah, I like the ergonomics of this camera. It's actually really easy to hold. And I don't know if One Leaf actually advertises this, but on the bottom there's the standard tripod mounting thread. So I put this on my tripod and it worked great, except it's a little wobbly, so it might not fit every single one exactly. For the purposes of this review, I actually put the rapid fire scope on my POF Renegade Plus uh, AR chambered in 556. I am doing a review on this pretty soon, so the rapid fire scope helped me to get a better accuracy test. I'm not gonna show the installation of this because it's pretty easy. Uh, it'll be pretty boring to put in this video. And uh, also YouTube throws a fit when you do that kind of stuff. So just keep that in mind. And just a heads up for you guys, I've already got a warning on my channel because uh, one of my videos of me shooting an AK, uh, they said was me making a video with the intention of trying to sell parts, even though it's bull. Um, so just a heads up, I'm trying to be really careful with what I post because I want this to be a resource everybody can use. And if it gets taken down, then nobody can. So with the scope, uh, it actually works really well uh, after having used it for, you know, about a month. Uh, I will say that the night vision device clips into this very well. There is almost no movement. Um, but one thing, like I stated earlier, is it makes this unit very long and you would then have to compensate by pulling your buttstock all the way back. Um, I had about seven inches from the lens to the rear of the buttstock. So I find, even though I won't be able to show it in this video, I find that I was actually crushing my head down behind the scope and putting it at weird angles so that I could actually see into the camera. So that's just one thing you got to keep in mind. Otherwise, looking through this thing, the glass is pretty clear. I was pretty impressed with it, actually. I had about six to seven inches of eye relief from anywhere about three to nine uh, magnification, and then from 10 to 12, had about three to four inches of eye relief. This is a second focal plane uh, scope, so keep that in mind. The reticle will stay the same size. Uh, at, for this purpose, uh, showing you the reticle, the scope was actually taken off the rifle uh, just to show you, so I'm not pointing a rifle around. Um, safety first, everybody. Don't want to scare anyone. But anyway, I right here am actually turning on the illuminated reticle. It is on max brightness, and just to show you, you can't see a thing. So the illuminated reticle is not daylight bright, and it's worthless. I did take this to the range to do a 100-yard uh, sight-in test of my... Um, POF Renegade, and at the same time get some good footage for you of the actual camera in use. So this thing was actually really easy to use. Um, it takes 1 8 uh, MOA adjustments, so actually quite a bit of adjustment. Uh, it was very easy to sight in. I was able to perform my accuracy test with this. Uh, it did hold zero. The scope never came loose because it was torqued down properly. Um, I actually dropped the rifle a couple times. Well, I mean, dropped it on the concrete table I was using on purpose, uh, and the scope was not damaged. So. 
as part of my review, I didn't just do bench shooting. I also did uh, a lot of presentation drills uh, from different angles, from high ready and low ready, uh, just to see if I could easily get uh, good shots on target. And I wanted to see how the eye box was. And it's actually pretty generous. I was able to be about five, six inches away and get uh, good shots on target with and seeing the whole picture, uh, not having any sight occlusion. Uh, it was pretty great, actually. So after using this scope for about a month, the reticle is very crisp and the glass is clear. Um, I can't complain there, but I'll get into why I think you could be better off with a different option later in this video. So now I'm going to show you guys footage of the NV100 night vision device during the daytime because yes, it does function as a daytime camera as well. Uh, it is digital, so basically you're attaching a digital camera to the rear of your scope. Right here I'm adjusting the focus of the reticle itself. And one thing that I should note is that aside from having the IR settings, it does have the daylight settings and you have three times, uh, three zoom settings basically. You have zoom one, zoom two, and zoom three. So you can zoom in pretty far in conjunction with the zoom already in your scope. So I'll stop talking for a second and let you guys see some of the footage and hear the audio of the camera. So not too shabby for a camera that costs around 300-ish bucks and can be found on Amazon. Right here I'm trying to show you the illuminated reticle again, and this is a cloudy and kind of a dark day, and that's the brightest it can get. That's actually what it looked like to the naked eye. So again, this thing's kind of worthless. You can use this as a standalone camera, so if you wanted to use it that way, you can. Uh, however, the focus, you're really going to have to adjust it, uh, because I could only get close-up, like really close-up shots. So this is the part you guys have all been waiting for, the actual night vision testing. I got out to public land in the desert in Arizona at around sunset, found about a 250 yard stretch of land, put a target out at the very end about 225 yards, and put the camera on my rapid fire scope. These shots were taken with the illuminated reticle at dusk. Uh, so this is using the daytime setting. So the night vision was not yet activated. And as you could see here, I'm actually using the illuminated reticle, which you can finally see, but looks are deceiving. It's still not that bright. One thing you guys need to be aware of when I start shooting this thing, the camera actually ends up turning off at one point. So I will say reliability with using this camera while shooting is kind of spotty. It happened a couple times while I was out in the desert. Okay, so camera just turned off. So we'll see if that happens again. So this is something that hadn't happened while I was at Ben Avery, uh, only out in the desert. So it's something I have to pay attention to over time. So this is the same time, uh, but just using the first and second IR settings, you can actually see quite a bit of detail. Uh, and the top of that mountain is about 400 yards. So pretty impressive for such a cheap camera. Uh, this is only on IR setting one. So if I go to two, three, four, five, six, there's six total settings and if you look at that that thing can extend way out there so at this point i then attached the nv100 night vision device to my sig msr 1 to 10 lpvo that was attached to my psa ar10 i did this for a couple reasons to show that you can actually attach this to your own scope and it will work pretty well uh, but also i wanted to test and see if this thing was going to hold up to the recoil of a 308 considering that it was turning off during the recoil of a 223 with a muzzle brake uh, which is almost like a 22. So anyway, I'll go ahead and show you that footage. Oh, so I'll go ahead and fire off a couple rounds just to show you that this thing is uh, durable with a 308 round. Hopefully, we're about to test that. And sure enough, the camera turned off again. So. This camera actually works and does pretty well for what it was designed to do, to be just a basic digital night vision device out to about 250 yards. Um, but I don't think that this thing will survive long term if you use it while you're actually shooting. So if you want to show uh, what your reticle looks like with this camera, I think that's good. Um, you know, in theory, it works really well as a spotting scope. And the IR illuminator can actually go out to about 250 yards, which is very impressive. So at this point, it was pitch black outside. And this is the time I wanted to test, just see how good this camera is. So I set this up on a tripod, uh, kicked the illuminator out as far as I could, 
And sure enough, you're able to see me at different distances, pretty much out to 175 yards. I had a black target out there. The only reason I didn't go all the way out to 200 was because it got really steep and I didn't want to fall down and hurt myself. While I don't think I'll recommend this uh, for attached to your scope shooting, um, this is a great spotting scope. So for a hunt, this thing would be awesome trying to find animals in the dark. All right, so it's time for my verdict. First and foremost, these were sent to me. I didn't pay for them, so I have no investment in this, so I can say whatever I want. The truth is, I don't think that the rapid fire scope is actually a good deal. It's about 360 bucks on One Leaf's website, whereas you can go buy a 4x16 Diamondback tactical scope for about the same price, if not a little bit cheaper on Amazon. Plus, you'll be able to find them everywhere. So uh, the scope doesn't really do anything different besides the fact that it has a special place to lock onto this night vision device. Uh, so I would throw the scope by the wayside. Uh, now, if you're talking about the night vision device, I think this thing is great for uh, spotting and for hunting, but I don't think this is good for uh, attaching it and shooting. That's just, technology's not quite developed yet uh, for that. Uh, at least this model isn't from One Leaf. Um, and for about $300, $400 more, you could go buy, um, or even $500 more, you can go buy the uh, Psyonix Aurora, which is actually a really good uh, digital night vision device. But for those that are balling on a budget, I think the NV100 uh, digital night vision device is actually great. For people that don't want to invest on a Psyonix Aurora camera, just want to have something they can go play with, they go hike with and use to hunt stuff like deer and pigs, I think this is a great option. Um, I think that's where it lies. I don't really think there's any other application for this thing. Uh, remember, this isn't analog night vision, so it's not going to help you see green. Uh, the images that you're seeing here uh, looks a little bit better in person, but that's pretty much what you get. So thanks for watching this video. Sorry it's taken a while to upload. I've had a lot of technical difficulties, especially with this one. And I think I'm going to blame uh, part of it was converting the files from TS to MP4. It took a while. That's just one of the things you're going to have to get used to if you decide to get this optic. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next video. Yeah.